Good evening, folks, and thanks for joining us. Uh, we will get started in just a moment. Um, but as we allow for attendees to make their way from the waiting room, please note that tonight's session is being recorded. A quick note that during tonight's session, please feel free to utilize the Q&A feature located at the bottom of your screen. Uh, we will be having a live webinar with our panelists towards the end of tonight's session, but we also have staff on the back end who will answer questions off air. So at any time you have a question, please feel free to utilize that Q&A feature located at the bottom of your screen, your screen to ask. Again, thank you all for joining us this evening, this afternoon, or this morning from wherever you may be attending this session, uh, the ins and outs of academic advising, what your student needs to know. We are excited to kick off the lineup for the Try and Family Web Series 2023 with this outstanding session all about academic advising here at UC San Diego. Um, but first, let me introduce myself. Uh, I am Dan Perez. I am the Assistant Director for the Office of Parent and Family Programs. Uh, and I have the pleasure of being tonight's moderator. And uh, before um, I get any further and introduce our wonderful panelists, I want to just review why we are here tonight and why we are talking about academic advising. Uh, UC San Diego offers a very unique style of advising with multiple different types of advisors. And so sometimes it can be a little bit challenging for students to navigate on which advisor they should talk to. So we're gonna cover on who students should be talking to when and the resources each type of advisor provides. Um, we wanna get dive into how advisors provide critical support during multiple periods of a student's journey. So not just during that first year or that last year, but everything in between. And also how advisors can offer more resources and information than just what is covered in a student's academic plan. And not just registering for courses, but how advisors can be more of a resource for students than just what do they sign up for next. Um, so without further ado, we have a ton of content to cover. So again, at any time you have a question, please feel free to utilize that Q&A feature. Um, but we're going to move right into it. So the first question I have for one of our advisors, um, John Cavallis, so if you want to pop on air. I'm going to ask, what can um, I expect from a session uh, from an advising session with my college advisors? So, what can students expect from an advising session with college advisors? And what about long-term academic planning with college advisors? Yeah, thank you, Dan. Hi, everyone. My name is John. I'm one of the academic advisors for Warren College Advising. Um, and this is a really great question. Like Dan said, advising is kind of different at UC San Diego um, because you have multiple advising departments here. You have advisors for your college. In this case, I'm a Warren College advisor. And then you'll have advisors who are for your major as well, who are there to support you with um, any question you have regarding like your major requirements, anything specific to your major. That's different for a lot of advising from a lot of advising apartments in previous institutions, like in your high schools, if you've been to community college, you might've just had one advising department, but here you have two advising departments that work for you. So that brings up this question. What can you expect from your college advisors? What exactly is different about the college advisors? What do we do? What's long-term academic planning like with us? Well, in general, your college advisors are here to help you with your general education and university requirements. So any questions that you have about your college GEs, making sure that you're on the right track to earn all of your units to graduate, and university requirements, such as the entry-level writing, American history and institution, and DEI requirement. These are all handled by your college advisor. Um, essentially, any questions about your major requirements, anything specific to that major is better handled directly from your major advisors. So since you have two advisors working for you, that brings into play, what about long-term academic planning specific to either your major or college advisor? 
long-term academic planning with your college advisor, if for that, we actually recommend to meet with your major advisors first. Essentially, long-term academic planning at UCSD is a, a two-part system. You'll go to your major advisors to learn about what your major requirements are, see what that journey is like, and then you'll come to your college advisor with that same plan that you've worked out with your major advisors to then plug in your college GEs, your university requirements, and to make sure that you have the required units to graduate. We think it's best to meet with major advisors first because a lot of times major requirements have a little more specific scheduling requirements. So it's good to walk in your long-term plan with your major classes, then connect with us, your college advisors, to learn more about how to plan your GEs around your major requirements. A lot of GEs are a lot more flexible and there could be more course options to choose from, meaning that you could create a more flexible schedule with your GE requirements. Um, they're usually offered in multiple quarters, while sometimes major requirements are kind of more locked into specific quarters. So it's usually easier to work your college GEs around your major requirements instead of vice versa. Awesome. Thank you so much, John. All right. Our next question, I'm going to bring up Christy McKenzie um, from the cytolo uh, psychology department. And simply, what should a student bring to their advising appointment? Hello, everybody. I'm Christy McKenzie. I work in the academic department for the psychology uh, department. So what you, should you bring to the, to the appointment? So I always tell students that keep a list of questions. So as you're going through your day-to-day, -day, you're getting ready to come to campus, or you're attending classes, you know, take advantage of your notebook, or if you're a tech person, you have your phone or laptop with you, use that notes app and write down questions. Nothing's too small, nothing's too big, anything you're not sure of. Because let's say your major advisor, maybe I don't answer that questions. I'm not the expert in internships, but I can direct you on who it would be on campus and I can make that referral. So keep a running list of questions. I can't tell you how many times I meet with students and they'll be like, oh, I had a question, but I can't remember it. Or they end up leaving and they contact me two days later, like, oh, I just thought of this question or just thought of this question. So really keep a running list of questions that you have for your advisor. And even if you don't think it's academic advisor related, write it down, ask it and let us help you. The next thing I would say is an academic plan. So this is where you um, plan out your two, three, four year plan, depending on if you're a transfer or first year student. And it goes a little bit to what John was saying, where you're gonna meet with your major and college advisor, plot some classes. There's lots of examples on the website, um, but take a, take a crack at it, you know, look at some of the examples, take a look at what courses are required for your major, what sounds interesting to you, and compile some of that information. So when you get to your advisors, you can say, you know what, I have looked at the major minor college requirements. Here are some things I found really interesting and I would like to explore. Or do you have more information on that? Could I maybe take classes in X and have it count for my major or for my college requirements? So really try to you don't have to know everything. You don't have to know how to fulfill all the requirements, but get familiar with the classes, the, you know, a little bit of the language so that when you come in, we already have a foundation of common knowledge and we get to know you a little bit better and what your interests are. Thank you. Thanks so much, Christy. All right. And keeping in Line with speaking about department or major academic advisors, I'd like to bring Rachel Mori up from the biological sciences department uh, to answer a few questions about that. So starting off is when should students see a department or major academic advisor? Thank you, Dan. <clears throat> yes, and nice to meet you all. My name is Rachel Mori. I'm one of the undergraduate advisors with the School of Biological Sciences. Um, so when should students see a department or major academic advisor? Um, there are many different types of advisors at UCSD, as it's been touched on a little bit already. Um, department advisors, college advisors, study abroad advising, career center advising. There are a lot of different places that students 
um, go to receive different types of support and different um, assistance for their specific needs. Um, so again, if a student needs help with general education or university requirements, they would go to their college advisor. Um, a major or department advisor assists students with a variety of needs pertaining specifically to the requirements for their major or for their minor in that specific department. Um, so an uh, assistance from a major or department advisor might include um, schedule adjustments or recommendations for a student, long-term planning of their major courses. Um, it might include checking if their major or minor requirements are being met. Are they properly, um, you know, um, working into the degree audit and is the student making sure that they're on track to graduate. Um, so many students find it helpful to meet with their department advisor at least once an academic year um, to make sure that they're on track for academic planning purposes. Although students can reach out to their department advisors as often as they need to in order to make sure they feel comfortable in their academic journey and all of their questions are being answered. Um, a department advisor might also be helpful if a student needs assistance um, with a subject they're struggling with in particular. Um, a major advisor can help them kind of work through that and give them some options um, for specifically for their major. Thanks so much, Rachel. Now, keeping in line with this topic, I'd like to ask Nancy Gilson to hop on, who's from the International Studies Program. Um, because I think a similar question that we've seen a lot is when we're talking about college advisors and departmental or major advisors, um, some families have asked, when can their student talk with a departmental advisor? Is it only after their student has declared their major? Um, and if, what happens if a student doesn't like their major and wants to change? How do they navigate that with a departmental advisor? Um let me welcome you all. I'm Nancy Gilson. I'm the um, director of the International Studies Program, and I'm also the director of a set of graduate uh, programs at the School of Global Policy and Strategy, and International Studies and uh, School of Global Policy and Strategy have a, a set of five-year programs, so that if you have a student who's interested in getting a, bas a bachelor's and a master's, um, uh, international studies is a great place to do that. Look, I think this is a really important question about, you know, can you go talk to someone when you're not a major in that department? Um, the parents may not want to hear this, but, but UCSD is an incredibly large place with so much going on. And I think it's really good if a student gets there and has a kind of intellectual identity crisis. Like, I came in to be a history major and I discovered, you know, structural engineering, or I came in to be a structural engineer, but I'm not really sure I love that. Um, and, and students want to do double majors, they want to add minors, they want to change their major. And, and my view on this is that students shouldn't kind of struggle through the, um, the confusion of, do I really want to do what I set out to do? Um, or do I want to add a piece of it? And so a lot of us, and myself uh, in particular, I welcome a student who comes in that says, I'm an econ major, but I think I want to do international studies. What does that really mean for me? Does it add a lot of coursework? Am I going to be here longer than four years? Um, or someone comes in and says, I want to do a minor in international studies or uh, can you help me think about going abroad and changing my major? Uh, I think a lot of the departments uh, are happy to talk to students. We understand that you're wanting to get out um, without too much extra time or what, you know, you hadn't really thought about a major before you got to UCSD. You thought you were going to be um, in one major and then all of a sudden want to do another and you don't really know what that major does and what you have to take. Um, so I think you should not be afraid to explore what the campus has to offer, and I think that you should ask a lot of questions, and, and one of the best ways to do that is to come in, you know, make an appointment or go to drop-in hours in departments and, and, and try to work out what your confusion is or what your interest is with someone who's, um, you know, who knows the campus. 
Thank you, Rachel and Nancy, for that insight. All right, question number four. Nancy, I'm going to keep you uh, on camera um, because I'm going to ask, when is it the when is it best to meet with an advisor in person? And when is using the virtual okay. advising center or the VAC or um, emailing an advisor enough? Um, so students have essentially three different ways, um, you know, to get information. One is the virtual advising center, which we call the VAC. And the VAC was created now about, actually about 2002, it was first uh, set up. And it's a great, it's, it's a great way to get very, you know, sort of answers to very specific questions. Oh, you know, in the middle of the night when a student is saying like, oh no, how many units do I need to graduate? Or um, did I, you know, do I need to file a petition? The VAC is a great way to get that kind of information because you type in a question, it, go, it can go to your college, it can go to your department. And, and so, um, uh, you know, you get that answer very quickly. Um, sorry, I have a cat. Um, email, not all, not all advisors use email um, uh, and prefer the VAC, but if you have someone and you wanna write something that's a little bit longer or perhaps a little bit more personal, you don't want it on the VAC, the email is great, but I think that personal in-person advising, whether it's in my office or via Zoom, is something that uh, you should do in your first year. Uh, I think it's a really good way for, first of all, your advisor to get to know you and find out what your interest is. Um, a student will come in and say, well, you know, eventually I want to do an internship, and these are things that I make note of. Uh, and so when something comes up that I think might interest a particular student, I make sure that they get information on it. So, so my advice is that, you know, if you're really exploring, if it's a conversation where you want to explore something, being in person is absolutely the best way. And I think if you're a student who, particularly if you're a student who you don't have a lot of um, experience with the university, perhaps your first generation, and so, you know, you don't have uh, a lot of uh, help outside of the university figuring out how to navigate. Coming in and being in person is a really good way to do it. So you have these, these different avenues and depending on what the issue is, um, I think students should use them all. But in-person advising very quickly, early in time uh, on campus is important. Thank you so much, Nancy. All right, for our next question, I'm going to bring Christy back on air. Uh, and Christy, do students need to see their college or de departmental advisor every quarter? Yeah, so sometimes, depending on if you friends of friends or if you have um, uh, children's or uh, know of folks who go to other institutions, you may hear like, I have to check in with my advisor every semester, or I can't be released to enrolled in classes until I meet with an advisor. UC San Diego is not like that. Students are not required to meet with a college or department advisor if they do not want to. They just FYI. So we as advisors encourage, highly encourage students to please come in and see us. I mean, at least once an academic year, but we would say anytime they have a question, um, I mean, just in general, we can refer them to wherever they need to go, especially if it's about classes or major college requirements, graduation requirements. Um, if it's, I mean, maybe at least once a year, maybe come in once a semester, try to come in before registration. So again, it's not required, but we highly recommend it. We ask students to do it. I know a lot of the times departments and colleges send out messages and we're like, please come see us. Um, and students may or may not follow that advice or they follow the advice maybe a little too late. So sometimes we see students in, in the psychology department, the major department, um, they're fourth year. 
and they're missing classes to fulfill requirements. So please don't, don't let it get to that point. Encourage your loved one to come in their first or second year if they are a transfer student. I know in our department, we, set, we help set them up with an academic plan their summer, so before they even get here in the fall, but they should still come in in the fall or winter to you know, see a, their major advisor. Um, and then, so again, you can come every quarter, as often as you want, you can do the virtual advising center. Um, people were asking a little bit about advising appointments. So I know within the psychology department, and I bet a few, few other places too on campus, we actually have done multiple surveys after, after COVID when we were all set, sent um, off campus. When we've come back, we've asked our students more than once, what do you prefer for advising? Do you prefer in-person or do you prefer remote? And the far, far um, kind of request by students is both, so hybrid. So here in the psychology department, we offer both in-person and remote kind of 50-50, if you will. So we find that works really well with our students. Um, if they wanna see us, they can come on in and see us. If they want to talk to us from a comfortable couch or somewhere else on campus, cause they don't wanna walk 15 minutes from you know the east side to the west side to our building, they can do that too. Um, if it's a simple question where they're like, yeah, I don't need to really see anybody. I just, can I take this class pass? No pass. You know, they can send a virtual advising center message. So whatever works for them, uh, works for us. So um, each department may be different. Some of them are only offering maybe remote advising, and that could be a particular reason. Maybe they're not on campus for whatever reason, but um. Yeah, so we did We did ask our students and they're like, we want both. So it's up to them how they wanna come in and see at least psychology advisors. And I know quite a few other departments are like that. Yeah, so send them to see us, we, we're here for them. Hey, thank you so much, Christy. And I will say, I bet you a lot of students took advantage of uh, virtual advising the past couple of weeks with all this rain we've had, because I don't think anybody has wanted to walk across campus in that. All right, for our next question, I'm gonna bring on uh, Robert Lopez from the history department. Uh, Robert, can a student double major and is it difficult? Yes, thank you, Dan. Uh, hi, my name is Robert Lopez. I am the undergraduate student affairs coordinator in the department of history. And yes, you can double major and no, it's not difficult if you plan. Um, it's always best to meet with your both department advisors uh, and your college advisor when you're considering adding a, another major. Uh, for some majors, there, it is a natural fit uh, for to double major. For instance, like in the history department, we have a lot of political science and history double majors. In many of those cases, uh, you can, you can uh, some courses, uh, for example, you can get two courses uh, that will fulfill requirements for both majors. And that's the case in many of our double majors. Uh, these courses uh, do have to go through a petition process to ensure that they do count for both majors. And there is a website, I can put it in the uh, chat here, uh, for the process of declaring uh, for a double major. And it's a very simple process. Um, this goes into another question I was uh, gonna answer about, uh, is there a minor uh, uh, option available? Yes, there are um, minor of, uh, options available. And the minor requirements do vary by department. And a student can easily declare for a minor using the major minor tool. Uh, it's best for the student to understand the general university requirements for the minors. And additionally, the departmental and college uh, offering the minor may have specific minor requirements and an approval process. And I can also uh, post the links to uh, declaring for the major or for a minor. And I can also post a, it might be at the end of this uh, slideshow, uh, the complete listing of all of the minors available uh, by department. Thanks so much, Robert. Um, and we will have a resources page at the end of tonight's session. And for everyone that has registered, we will be sending out a copy of tonight's PowerPoint that will include all the links that are spoken about. Okay, I am not done yet introducing different advisors. I'm going to be joined by Camille Stahelena to answer this question. If a student is struggling with a course, what resources are available to help them? 
So we definitely encourage students to utilize instructor and um, assistant office hours that are available outside of lecture and discussion times if additional clarification is needed with course content. Some departments also offer tutoring within their departments. Um, but also there are tutoring resources available on campus through the Academic Achievement Hub, and they offer content tutoring, learning strategies, um, and supplemental instruction. There's also OASIS and the Writing Hub. So there are multiple, multiple, a multitude um, of resources available on campus, um, including the ones I just mentioned. And then two, we also encourage students to check in with their major department program and college advisors early in the quarter, if possible, um, to discuss possible like enrollment drop options, like such as drop deadlines with the students. Um, to see if adjusting or reducing like the student's course load um, is a possible option for them. Awesome. Thank you so much, Jamil. Okay, John from Warren, I'm going to bring you back on to tackle this question. Uh, who can help a student with non-academic related questions, such as applying for part-time status, taking time away from the university, uh, or questions about a student's academic standing, and what about questions related to a student's transcript, financial aid, or other services? Thank you. Um, my cat's joining me from outside now. Just to let you know, if you hear something that sounds like a ghost wailing in the background, that's my cat. She's woke up. She's here now. Um, so yeah, these are a lot of interesting things to think about. Um, there's a lot of different things that students might have questions about outside of academics, outside of their major, their college requirements. Um, and these questions are best asked or best answered rather um, by your college advisors. Our, your college advisors can discuss different matters such as changing your major, adding a minor, um, the things that we're talking about here, such as applying for part-time status, how to take time away from the university. Essentially, there's a lot of like non-academic questions that your college advisors can help you out with. Now, we don't always have answers to all the specifics. For example, um, a lot of folks will have questions about like study abroad, that's a big topic that we get. How do I study abroad? Um, we're not the best resource for helping students with study abroad. We actually have dedicated study abroad advisors that are a fantastic resource for helping students explore all those different programs. Um, and so in those cases, we would refer students out to different departments. Like we were talking about earlier too, a lot of tutoring resources, things like that. We'll refer students to those different areas, but um, your college advisors are a good kind of first base to go to to get to know what those resources are before we make that referral out. So I like to tell people that your college advisors are like a good first go-to place if you're not sure where to go, just check with their college advisor. You can send us a back message, you can come into advising. There's really like no wrong question to ask any advisor, but especially your college advisor, because if we can't answer the question, we'll tell you where to go. We may tell you to go to your major advisor, go to a tutoring resource, study abroad. Um, we'll make that referral out for you and partner you with the right resources. Um, but for a lot of things such as like taking time away from the university, part-time status, um, if a student needs to withdraw or those academic standing um, type situations, we can help specifically with those. So there are a lot of like extra outside of academic type situations that we can certainly support with. Great, thanks so much, John. All right, uh, for question number nine, I'm gonna bring on Ana Lopez from Computer Science and Engineering. I told you I was not done introducing different advisors. Anna, how can students get involved in research or internships? Hi, yeah, thank you for the question. So at UCSE, there's so many resources that students can take advantage of. Um, and I think visiting your advisor can be a way to start, a good way to start as there are many resources that can be specific to your major. So they will also have, be able to point you to other resources on campus. We have the research experience and applied learning portal, the academic enrichment programs, uh, research experience for undergraduates, the academic internship program, career fairs, team internship programs, and many more. So you should meet with your college or major advisors more than likely your major advisors uh, to discuss the different resources and how you can receive credits for different things. Your college may also know some resources, so it's always good to just check in with everyone that you can. We're all here to help you. Thank you so much, Anna. Okay, and with our final um, 
previously asked question. I'm going to bring Camille back on. Um, Camille, what are resources um, that are available to students for career planning and exploration? Yeah, so some departments and major programs have specialized career exploration tips um, and events that are avail available uh, for students that are declared a major within their department or program. Um, like, for example, for biosciences, which is the school I work for, um, we offer a life sciences career conference um, every year for students. Um, and the alumni that we have attend from UCSD um, aren't usually just students who have been pre-health, pre-med, it's um, other folks in the life science industry. So we have events like that. Um, I did some research on some other departments on campus. Um, and I know, like, for example, the economics department, the history department, and the psychology department, if you look at their web pages, there's also um, like career paths and exploration tips um, on their individual websites also. Um, but really, we encourage students to visit the Career Center on campus um, because they offer a variety of services, including like career exploration, planning, resume, and cover letter writing. Um, they also have career and networking fairs for students to um, find internships or part-time and full-time opportunities. Um, something that's also unique about the Career Center is they also have pre-health, uh, pre-med advising. Uh, for students via Health Beat Advising. Thank you so much, Camille. And uh, for families, if you want to come visit the Career Center, that's where you can find our office, the Office of Parent and Family Programs, because we are a hidden gem within the Career Center. All right, folks, I'm going to ask all of the advisors who have shared their expertise to join me on screen for our live Q&A. I know that uh, many of you have been answering questions offline already, so thank you so much for that. Um, and we also are appreciative of everyone who posted questions as part of their registration. Um, so a couple questions we've been receiving in the q and I'm just going to throw out, and if you feel like you'd like to answer, please do not hesitate and just go for it. Um, so the first question I have is a, a family member has asked, there are two students, they have two students on campus. They both seem to have a handle on what they need to take and have done their own planning thus far using tools like the degree audit. Should um, we encourage the students to meet with either their college or major advisors if they seem to have it all together? And if so, how often? I can kind of start this one off. Um... I think it's good, even if like you feel like you have it all together. I know most of us do and it's great, but I think it's always good to double check just to be safe. Um, there's definitely been some times where students have thought everything was all good. There was one student that was like about to graduate in an upcoming quarter and they were like, I'm good, right? I have everything done. Turns out that they enrolled in like one class that it, as it turns out, wasn't counting towards their degree requirements. And it's a good thing we caught that because they would have had to have stayed an entire extra quarter um, if they'd missed that degree requirement. So sometimes those little things can happen and a lot of students will come into us and say, hey, I'm just coming in during enrollment season when they're enrolling in new classes to make sure that all of my classes are counting appropriately. A lot of times those sessions are just little quick five minute appointments and students might go, gosh, why do they even come in for this? And it's like, well, it definitely saves them a lot of headache in the long run if they don't have to stay an entire extra quarter. Um, I know it sometimes seems kind of silly when we know that we have those degree requirements all together and figured out, but it's just better to be safe than sorry. So it's really great for students to check in, I'd say at least like once a quarter to make sure that their degree requirements are on track and um, everything's being completed as they intended to. Great, thanks so much, John. Nancy, and, I can see. Yeah, can I add to that and say that um, I've, I've been on campus a very long time, 30 years, actually, not all of them as an advisor, but yeah, a long time I taught on campus. Um, and one of the things that I've heard over and over and over again is students who get to their fourth year, and they really have, they've been very organized, they've got all their classes, they know what they're doing. And then they come in to talk to you in winter quarter of their fourth year, and you begin to talk about stuff that's going on on campus, and they say, oh, like, oh, I didn't know about that. And I think it's really sad for someone to graduate and then, or get ready to graduate during their last quarter and discover that they've never really talked to anyone about all the other stuff that's going on on campus. They've been very diligent. You know, they, they've, they've made everybody happy. Um, uh, but then 
you know, they haven't, they haven't explored the campus. They haven't just explored the other departments and programs and, you know, and things that they can do. Um, and, you know, advisors are, are good at kind of saying, well, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? And so I think it's always important for students to, to see their advisor. Great, thank you so much for sharing that insight. Um, a question that we've seen come through a couple times tonight and in our uh, previously uh, submitted questions through registration is do students get to pick their advisor or are they assigned a specific advisor? Uh, I can start that one off. Um, so, Specific advisors are not typically assigned to students. Um, we usually have um, several advisors per department who are able to assist a student at any time for any question that they have come through. Um, and sometimes this can be more beneficial because someone is always available to assist a student. Um, so they don't have someone that they must see um, every time specifically for a question that they have, they can just come to um, whatever advising option is available for the student, whether it's drop in online, walk in in person, um, perhaps making an appointment or submitting a question through the virtual advising center. Someone will always be there to help the student. Hey, thank you so much, Rachel. Um, here's a question that I get pretty often is, can an advisor discuss their student's degree audit or academic plan with a parent or family member? No. <laughs> uh, anyone want to explain it? Because I've done it a lot. I'll, I'll jump in on that. Um, so federal privacy laws, um, uh, you're, when your student leaves home and they and and come to campus, they're protected um, by federal privacy laws. And so uh, we can if if and we all we all get these calls or we all have occasionally get an email. Someone tracks you down by email. Um, and look, I have two adult children, both of whom went to college, so I I do get it. Um, but. Uh, unless your student signs a waiver that allows us to talk with you, and in some cases, very specific things, you can talk to them about my academics, but you can't talk to them about what I told you about my mental health or my extracurricular activities or whatever. Um, we cannot do that. We're not unsympathetic with parents wanting to know what's going on with their children. And certainly, if we believe that your child is at risk in some fashion, um, we are mandatory reporters. And so we report that to the people who can, in fact, make a decision about what you need to know. Their college dean, um, a, a case manager at CAPS, um, you know, sort of up that reporting level. Uh, but but there's really, unfortunately for you, there's very little, <laughs> very little that we can tell you, um, uh, except, you know, yeah, we've seen your child, uh, your student does come in, um, so we can reassure you that they, you know, that they're around. But, but beyond that, there's very little that we can talk to you about um, without explicit permission from them. Thank you for sharing, Nancy. Okay, folks, we're going to move into our last question for our live Q&A. If you have a question that did not get answered tonight or you think of something later, please feel free to email parents at ucsd.edu. I'll drop the email address in the chat, and we will make sure those get answered after the webinar. Um, this question is going to kind of be related, but it's a two-parter is uh, how do advisors assist students on academic probation or who may be subject to academic disqualification get back on track? And for students who are entering their final year at the university, do advisors proactively reach out if they are not on track to graduate? Yeah, I can touch on this a little bit. I feel like as a college advisor, I should definitely address this because this is one of those things that as college advisors, um, this is one of those things outside of academics that we're responsible for. Um, when students are in those academic standings, whether that's academic probation, 
subject to disqualification or if students are disqualified from the university. Um, we help to support students during those entire experiences, um, whether it's helping students to better understand what those academic standings are, helping them learn about different support resources, whether it be academic support, um, personal like health strategy, best practices, kind of like time management, lifestyle type support situations, um, as well as how to navigate coming back to school if a student is academically disqualified. Um, academic disqualification is just taking a year away from the university and we're there for the students during that whole time like once if they're gone for a year they can still send us back messages they can still come meet with us um my supervisor explained it to me like the door to UCSD never closes and so advisors are always here to support students during any of those kinds of experiences um so we can help to provide students with resources and best practices to help get them back to um get back to good academic standing and work beyond um, those struggles and difficulties. Thank you, John. Anyone want to touch on students who may not be meeting their graduating, their degree requirements? Is there any sort of notification for those students from the advisors? Or what should students do to ensure that they're on track? Um, I think to be preventative, I guess, um, you really, as a student, should be really checking your degree audit at least once a quarter um, from when you first start at UCSD, um, even to when you're registering for classes, you should be checking your record to make sure like what you're enrolling in is applying to major requirements or GE requirements. Um, we don't necessarily, I think, uh, like somebody else asked this question in the Q&A feature, if we have like a system that flags students, we don't have, I believe, a system at UCSD that flags students that are failing. Um, I know sometimes in like biology, some faculty reach out to our advising office if, a, if they're concerned about a student, but of course that doesn't happen for all the thousands of students that they teach. Um, so really it's, we put it on the students. Um, to make sure they're checking their academic progress. If um, you know they're concerned about a class, if they can catch it earlier in the quarter, maybe they could check in with us earlier in the quarter. Um, like I mentioned earlier, so we could talk about like possible drop deadlines or reducing their schedule. Um, and then to just, you know, hopefully at whatever point your student is at in their two, three, four year journey at UCSD, um, that they check in with the advising whether it's their major department or their college at one point, so they can review a long-term plan for finishing up um, and then just adjusting from there if we need to do summer school <laughs> or not. Thank you so much, Camille. Um, and thank you all for joining us this evening. I really appreciate your insight and your expertise um, and most importantly, your time. Um, I'm gonna move into just a few housekeeping notes for the rest of the um, this evening's session. We and the advisors have talked about lots of different resources and lots of links. All of these links will be sent out tomorrow along with the recording of this session. Um, so don't worry if you missed a link or you, you heard something and you didn't know which web page to go to, we're gonna send all of these out. The advisors have done a great job at curating resources related to tonight's topic. Um, also, if you would like to rewatch this session with translated subtitles in a preferred language, you can do so after it is um, posted to our YouTube channel tomorrow by utilizing the auto translate feature um, illustrated on the screen by selecting settings, subtitles, auto translate, and that preferred language. Um, if you all would like to get involved with our office in the campus, you can always sign up to be a Triant Parent Family Ambassador. Um, we are always accepting new Triant Parent Family Ambassadors to participate with all the events, sessions, um, all of the avenues in which we provide engagement for families on campus um, is one of the main things we start with is our Triant Parent Family Ambassadors. So please feel free to sign up at any time, no matter where you are around the world as well, because we have over 100 Triant Parent Family Ambassadors in a multitude of different countries. And finally, thank you so much for attending tonight's Trine Family Web Series session. We have three more sessions throughout this quarter um, that are on the screen. Email invites, just like the one for tonight's session, will be sent out periodically. Um, but we look forward to seeing you 
at future Trine Family Web Series sessions. And thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to learn and engage and interact with us and our advising staff, all in the means of supporting your student and their academic success here at UC San Diego. Uh, we appreciate it and we know that your students appreciate it. So thank you so much and have a great rest of your evening, morning or afternoon um, and hope to see you soon. Thank you so much.